You may have heard of a little game going around called Wordle. Wordle. It has been trending the whole week. What is Wordle? It's called Wordle. Wordle. It's the latest viral word game challenge called Wordle. It's called Wordle or Wordle. What on earth is Wordle? Wordle is a simple guessing game where you have six tries to guess a five letter word. Each guess must be a valid five letter word. After each guess, the colors of the tiles will change to show you how close your guess was to the answer. So if a letter you guessed is in the answer and in the correct spot, the tile will turn green. And if the letter you guessed is in the answer but in the wrong spot, the tile will turn yellow. And if it's not in the word at all, it'll stay faded gray. Wrong. That's it. Those are all the rules. But part of what makes this so addictive is that you can only play one game a day. I was really enjoying it and I figured, hey, let me see if I can add this functionality to my Discord bot to play it as many times as I want. And this actually works out perfectly because a few weeks ago I set up a Discord bot to delete messages sent by scammers. So I decided to just reuse that bot logic and add the functionality for it to be able to play Wordle. So this video is going to be me showing what I did and how you can do it yourself. All the code for this project is going to be stored on GitHub, so just check the link down below. First thing you need is an actual Discord bot. Now the actual process of creating the bot is super easy and you can get it done in about 15 minutes. Rather than waste time reinventing the wheel, I wanna just point you to the video that I watched to learn how to do it. It's this really great tutorial by Codeline. He explains the process in a very clear and succinct way and I highly recommend you check this out. Link is going to be down below in the description. I intentionally wrote the code for this project in a very clean, modular manner so that you can start right where that tutorial ends and pick up this code and place it into any Discord bot. So without messing around anymore, let's actually look into the code. All of the code for this project is going to be included in this one wordle.js file. This file is going to have three main functions. They are load wordle, play wordle, and show stats. These three functions can be easily implemented by importing them at the top of your main.js file. Now let's go over the three commands that the bot responds to. They are play Wordle, which loads a new Wordle game, guess, which allows a player to make a guess, and Wordle stats, which shows your games played and win percentage. All three of these commands are then going to call a function that's included in the Wordle script. Let's go over the first one of these in depth, the load new Wordle function. The first step is to open a CSV file that I created to hold all the data for our project. Since we want to allow multiple Discord users to play different games at the same time, we're going to use each player's unique Discord ID as a key to store the value of their stats and current ongoing games. This is going to give our bot a way to discern between different players and different games. The CSV is also going to hold the answer to the player's games along with their win percentage. The input for the load wordle function is a message that's sent in Discord. It'll then check the author of the message and loop through the CSV to see if we have a record on that player. If it can't find a record, that means the player hasn't yet played a game and it'll create a new one for them. But if it does find a player, it'll first check to see if that player has started any games today. In order to determine that, I created a function called played today, which will return true if the user has played a game or false if they haven't. Pretty obvious. This function takes the date column from the player's data in the CSV and compares it to today's date. If the player has already played a game today, the bot will just respond telling them to come back tomorrow. If this isn't the case, then we're going to start a new game. So first thing we need to do is select an answer for the player. Instead of doing the same answer for the entire day for all players, since I want it to be able to be played in Discord with multiple people using it, if everyone's guessing the same word, it's not going to work out super well. So I need to select a new answer for each player each day. To do that, I went online and I found a list of a few hundred five letter words. I'm also going to erase any guesses from yesterday and set the game completion status to false. I then write all of this to the CSV and load the game. Now let's talk about actually loading the game. Wordle is made up of little squares that are different colors with letters centered on them. My initial thought was to do this using emojis, but I quickly realized that I couldn't get the letters to show up on top of squares, and that if I don't show the letters, there's no way I'll be able to remember what you guessed in the previous rows. After searching around a bit online, I found a solution for my problem. It's a tool that's called Canvas. Now discord.js, the package that I'm using to write this, can use Canvas as an image manipulation tool that allows you to modify images with code. It's super powerful, and after experimenting with it for a little bit, I knew that this is all we're gonna need. The first task would be creating a background and little squares. 
I create the squares in Photoshop and save them all in a folder that my bot can access. You can also use GIMP or any free photo manipulation tool for this step. I made sure to match the colors exactly with the game, and if you may be wondering how I match that, and uh, yep, yep, that looks about right. Now that we have our list of images, we can use the canvas extension to load these images into our function. This function is going to run through two separate for loops. The inner loop iterates for the rows while the outer loop will iterate for the columns. To determine which image should be loaded in for each of the 30 squares, I created a function that takes in the guess, the answer, and the index of the letter. The first condition is for a row where a guess has not yet been made, in which it'll just return the empty square. Now, if the guess's letter is identical to the answer's letter and in the exact same spot, it's going to return a green square. Now, if it's not identical, but it is found elsewhere in the answer, it will return the key for the yellow square. If it's not found anywhere in the word, it'll just return the key for the absent square. Now, after the correct images are returned, I will then use the canvas extension to draw those images. The position of each square is going to be dependent on where that letter falls within the word, and I'm offsetting a little bit between each letter. Then once we've written every letter of a word, we will then add a little buffer and then start for the next row. Once all the images have been drawn on the canvas, we're then going to take it and use the message attachment function. And we're going to reply to the initial message that started all of this with that play wordle function, sending the newly created image. When starting a new game, the rows will all first initially appear as empty, but as you guess, they will fill up over time. Now let's go over how guessing works. Again, guessing is established by using the exclamation point guess command. And the first thing our bot does is open the CSV and check to see if you've already completed the game today. If you have, it replies to the user informing them of that and ends all processes. If you haven't finished a game, it'll then begin its logic. It begins by taking the contents of the message sent and focusing only on the text inputted after the command. Then we validate to see if the guess is legal. We check to make sure that it's five characters long, and we also check to make sure that it is a valid word. And to do that, we just run it against the list of possible answers. I tried to keep the list of possible answers only to more common five-letter words, because I don't think it's really fair to be using some very obscure or esoteric type word. So although this can't provide an exhaustive dictionary for all five-letter words, I think it covers most of them. Regardless, if the player's guess does not pass the validation checks, the bot will reply to them, telling them off. Now that we've filtered out all the invalid guesses, we can begin the logic of a little data massaging and writing to the CSV file. After that, we have the actual guess function. This function works similar to the loading game where we load in all our images and set up our offsets, but now with the added input of the guess. We're going to add this new guess to the array of guesses that the user has already made. And just like before, we're going to compare the guess to the actual answer and depending on how accurate it is, color the squares. In the same way, once this function is complete, we're going to reply to the message of the person who originally made this guess with the image of their guesses. And now that we've gone over most of the guessing logic, we want to check for our game over conditions. The first checks the accuracy of your last guess, and if it's incorrect and it, this is your sixth guess, game over for you. But if that's not the case and your guess does match, congratulations, you've won. We're going to update the CSV to show that the game completion is true, and also we'll add a win to the player's data. We'll then reply to the player's message, congratulating them on the win, and show them how many tries it took. Finally, we do have that one last function that shows all the Wordle stats. This just shows games played and win percentage. Simple enough. But that wraps up about all of the bot's functionality. So that wraps up just about all the main functions. I'm going to let a little bit of the gameplay just roll in the back here so you can see the bot in action. Again, all the code for this bot is available for you to download up on GitHub. Link is down below. I know there's still one or two bugs left that I've still got to squash. So if you find any of those, uh, reach out. I'm going to be updating the GitHub for another like week or so. I understand this video is actually a little bit different from the other two that I've uploaded so far. Uh, definitely a little more code focused and a little less goofy, but I wanted to try it out. So feel free to let me know down in the comments whether you 
like this format or if you didn't, that's fine too. The main focus of this channel is still going to stay on Unity development, but I think a fun video like this every now and then to mi mix it up is enjoyable to make and I hope you enjoyed watching it too. I've got like 40 subscribers at the time of making this video, so thank you for all that have joined so far. And if you haven't yet and you enjoyed watching this, hey, you know, a like or a sub would be super impactful for me. Anyway, we're going to call it here, so I hope you have a great day and uh, I'll see you in the next one.